Very excited today. We got Chris Hansen. Yes. From To Catch a Predator. Mm hmm. That show is beyond huge. Oh, yeah. Obviously. He's been on our show a couple times on the phone, in studio. Yep. Uh, let's get him in here. Sure. Chris Hansen, everybody. Oh, Steve's going to get him. Oh, okay. They're doing marathons now on MSNBC. Nine to four in the morning. Yeah, love it. <laughs> got a little surprise for him. Hey. How are you? Good. Why don't you uh, why don't you take a seat over there, Chris? Uh, enjoying the cookies and lemonade. We know we had brownies at the last. Uh, take a uh, seat. Brownies, did you? Brownies. <laughs> exactly. So uh, what what are you doing here? I just came to be on the Opie and Anthony show. On the Opie and Anthony show. Well, yeah, I've been here yeah. before. You've been here before. So you've done this before. <laughs> no, you're supposed to say, it's not your first time. <laughs> so it's not your first time. Um, I have a few uh, have transcripts, transcripts <laughs> of uh, things that, um, well, let's listen to them together and, and see if uh, you recognize any of these. Is this you, Chris? I'm not going to avoid the subject. I would like to make love to you after we are done boot shopping. I have a serious fetish for boots. <laughs> Do you have a fetish for boots? Is that what you were uh, saying in this? Uh... <laughs> this is like the uh, you know being put on the spot here. It's the, the... <laughs> I uh, well, d you did say that, didn't you? <laughs> I believe that's your voice. Do we have another uh, clip is, uh, for Chris? Voice. Voice. I can't control my horny level. <laughs> I want to blank your brains out. I can't help it. You know, when I read that back, that particular potential predator, there was something in the back of my mind that said, you know, that could come back to haunt me. Oh, so you're saying you've read this back. <laughs> Before. <laughs> this was in reference to a 15-year-old girl. <laughs> well, it was. <laughs> I think we have one more clip. Uh, Chris, is this, is this you? Remember, sex is a little nasty. I don't want your dad to find stuff in his bed. <laughs> Chris, you're you're a responsible journalist, and now you understand your life is ruined. I'd like to uh, bring our camera crew out here. You do realize this is no, on you're, video. You're supposed to say, "There's something I've got to tell you." <laughs> <laughs> We're Opie and Anthony We're on two point three K Rock. He invented this game. Yeah, he's but so <laughs> damn good at it. Yeah, but there's, he's sweating a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. You can hear it's it. early. You know, we usually shoot these investigations at night. I have a whole day to prepare. I'm sorry, our camera crew's uh, not as uh, you know big as yours. No. Exactly. I love when they come out with the bones too. That's fantastic. Well, you got to hear everything. Well, uh, Chris Hansen. Wait, can we play? the last one like oh one. what is there more well, well, well we had a whole bunch but this one we just gotta play all right it's, it's let's hear this creepy one. hearing uh, chris hansen say this you are ready to have my thang in your <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. was that a black dude uh well it was typed off as a thang but i'm saying yeah, the way he had to add thang uh, thang well uh, he's just reading the transcripts as they come out exactly yeah, yeah. it but is he, what it but is. He, his, yeah his monotone um, non-attached reading style <laughs> left at the thang. You don't want to sound like it's titillating. Dick, no, baby. but here, here's the thing. You know, a lot of times, you know, I'm talking to these guys, and they, they're not very uh, vocal, and sometimes the best way to get them to talk is to go back and read the transcripts. And right, so, right. And I read them, you know, verbatim. Right. And we try to balance, you know, Showing people what these guys are capable of doing and not trying. Yeah, to Yeah, we get one of the explicit. black dudes, the soul shake, mm -hmm. like the the extra black. Like he was like, "What's up, man?" And gave you the thing. And you just followed along with the. No, with the... but I did in the last investigation. I did get a. a... <laughs> yeah, and the, 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 <laughs> this pound. was the guy who was the fan of yours. But... Yeah, hey, yeah, hey, we, hey, we've been playing. Wait a minute! I can turn minute. this around. He invented it. I'm telling you, dirty new ways. We're still arguing the fact <laughs> that if this guy was an actual fan of our show. Oh, God. It's so we, have true. A lot, we have a lot at stake here. Well, wow. We think he might have been a casual listener. A casual? Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, this guy came in, <laughs> and, and he had the conversation with the on-site decoy in this yeah. most recent investigation, and she was brilliant because mm -hmm. she could really engage these guys. So not only did we see this this online grooming and this contact, we saw this play out in real time. And these guys were saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And so this happens, and it comes time for me to walk out, and he, he, he says, you're, you're, you're Chris Hansen. And I said, how did you know that? He goes, I'm a religious. 
viewer. I never miss an episode. I pull them off the Internet. And before I can formulate the next question, he says, oh, and I heard you on Opie and Anthony. You're, you're pretty good. <laughs> And I'm like, you know, do you get the trouble that? Uh, yeah, don't today? you understand? This isn't a meet and greet. Yeah. <laughs> you're pretty much screwed here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Can I ask you a question, Chris? Absolutely. Can you? Why don't you? This is. I watched the show. Matter of fact, they do marathons now, like on MSNBC. Like they used to do yeah. Lock Up. They change it to pre is Predator Night. Yeah. And I used Saturday to love Lock Up. Lock Up's gone. Yeah. Let's 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 do this. Let's figure this out. The age 13, 14. All right. There's so many guys that get caught. That there has to be something about that age that has to be a teetering age. Can you lower the age to nine so that it is <laughs> are you exact? Ins are you wait a minute. Insane. So that you He's know. wearing a tie. Because there's so many dudes that come in to this 13 is not stopping people. Patrice, that's supposed to show that there's a problem here. Yes. Not, not the fact but that you no, lower the age to get these to guys say, off the hook. No, no, no. Not not to get him off the hook. See, I was with you if you said no, fifteen. Wait a but, minute, no. <laughs> Jesus. Lower the age to nine. Let me make this make sure you understand this. He's in okay. shock over make, there. Listen to this. Listen, I don't care if Chris is in shock. Listen to this. Stop being a journalist for Clearly. Clearly. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning the the perverted justice people right, the decoy. lower the decoy age well, to something fouler than thirteen. You know, I'm just gonna say Thirteen is foul. You, it's, do you, yeah. Don't try to back is. me into a corner. I'm, I'm not backing you into a corner. Thirteen I is an arguable age. I'm gonna tell you why. I talked to my girlfriend the other day. I said, "When did you have sex?" She said, "Thirteen mm -hmm. is when I first had sex with a seventeen-year-old guy." I said, "Was you? Did you feel like you were raped? Did you feel like you was taking advantage of?" She said, "No, I just I was want to have sex." So I'm saying. There's a few 13-year-olds that are having sex, I, I, I think, not under the, the, the coercion. Yeah, but they don't want so, with 30-year-old guys I and, know, and, and stuff. I know, but make the age nine so you go, ah. Because well, people think, are going 14. But people are saying, ah, to Chris, 13. Chris, Chris, let Chris the answer. The law yeah, is he's the, the law. Expert. And the reality is this, and, and, I, and I understand your point, but I think from the decoy's point of view, when perverted justice does this, they try to set up the most realistic scenario and and you would see see most often i think uh a scenario where a 13 or 14 year old could conceivably be home alone where perhaps mm -hmm. a nine-year-old may not be and and they're also trying to keep it uh sexy and keep, hot to keep it <laughs> this is what i'm saying to keep it coming so that if you lower it to nine dudes that do that you go the let's let's work our way from the bottom bottom because 13 and 14, basically what he's saying, it's an appealing age to come for dudes and be like, oh, 14. Well, it seems to be the age that a lot of these girls uh, uh, and guys, these these predators, are using the computer and communicating with each other are mostly in that age bracket. Well, I, that's th I think that's the age bracket that these potential predators target because mm -hmm. those are kids who are online and and uh, they're curious. Right. And, and, you know, they're out there in the social networking sites and in the chat rooms. So, mm -hmm. you know, naturally they become the targets. Yeah. For this type yeah, of they're going for where the, you know, the targets are. Hey, why That's all. Why aren't you drinking our lemonade? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't my coffee here. Didn't drink that either. Well, the cookies God are knows good. where the interns know got it. Yeah. We exactly. Didn't, we didn't poison the cookies. He's smart. <laughs> He's a smart man. <laughs> I haven't survived this long. Uh, yeah. By being on the show. I saw, I saw, uh, I've been watching uh, MSNBC and on the weekends. It is just, I was talking about this the other day. I don't know how it's affecting people, but it is murder weekend. It is just murder weekend. Every weekend you could see murders and then how they catch the people. And I'm fascinated by this. And I saw one that you actually did, did a story on. And it was a while ago. You were adorable. You must have been <laughs> very young in your uh, younger days. Uh, it was that double jeopardy case. Oh, it was the uh, Melignato. Oh my yeah. God! Down in uh, was that the that one is unbelievable. That was the twins you were telling me about. No, this was the one where uh, a man uh, down in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, in Kentucky, he murdered his wife. Correct. And, and he had some girlfriend accomplice help him, right. help him out. They photographed this murder uh, and uh, took some of her jewelry. Uh, did horrible things to her uh, before they murdered her. Wait, so they murdered her, her and they took all sorts of pictures? Yeah, as he was uh, having sex with her and, and uh, murdering her. And they could never find these pictures 
or the missing jewelry. And that's what the case really hinged on with the jury. They but said, how did, well, how where did they know there pictures? was pictures? Well, somebody they, else, uh, they the woman know, rolled. What, what, what happened was they tried this guy and uh, basically he, he got off. Mm -hmm. And some years <clears> later, um, as I recall, he sold the house and the people came in to, to uh, re carpet. Yeah, pulled up the carpet. They pulled up the carpet. And in. Um, one of the areas where there was a ventilation, they found some canisters of undeveloped film. And they developed this film, and it is photographic evidence of the actual murder. Wow. And, wow. and they couldn't, it's double jeopardy, Why so did, they, they, they got him on a tried. perjury charge. Right, they did. But he, he's sentence. out. Yeah, they, I think they tried. They, they got <laughs> they some like the eight years. Did, yeah. uh, but he's out now, and uh, whenever a camera approaches him, he just starts quoting gospel and... You know, he's uh, born again, he's so he doesn't uh, address it. He just goes, you know, the Lord will be my judge. And you ever get scared of Max Cady stuff, uh, Chris? Like, the, first, do you have police in there? That's what we were discussing before. Do you have people in there in case a dude goes, you mother, I'm going to knock you out right now? Well, we have a very detailed security protocol that we have. And so it's tailored to each individual location. And whether we're doing a predator thing or whether we're you know, doing iPod theft or ID theft and we're in West Africa, I mean, we have a team in place, oh, so well, I feel pretty comfortable. Yeah. Oh, you I like saw you know that. Karate. You know, you can fight, can't you? Well, I, you know, I grew up in Detroit. He can fight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, all right. right. He, 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 he can take care of himself. That's all he needs to say. And, and here's another thing I like to ask, and sometimes I get a little bored watching you just catch it. Could, did, could you do something, just like have a, when the guys come up, have a 50-year-old woman answer the door, and just have the guys just go, wait a minute. Yeah, we want you bloopers. You 13? <laughs> we want some bloopers. <laughs> bloopers. <laughs> it's, it's not really some... a show conducive to comedy. <laughs> we want bloopers. We want Benny Hill music. <laughs> I don't think uh, you can really turn to spin it funny. You, you old. <laughs> hey, I saw the scam show also. Uh, yeah, that the, was uh, great from, uh, yeah, the uh, Nigerian uh, scammers. And when you get the guy running down the street, <laughs> you must have known that was going to be funny. He was moving fast. But could you explain? I didn't see this. this, this these are the guys, uh, that, uh, you know, investigators call it the Nigerian scams. And, sure. And they, they get you online, hi, I'm... So and so and so and so, and and uh, I need your help. I've got thirty eight million dollars, but I need you to put up ten thousand dollars to give me a bank account. And, mm -hmm. and people fall for this stuff all the time. Amazing. And it, there was a, a treasurer in Michigan who invested not only his own money but some county funds oh. in this thing, thinking that he, people well, think. it's alluring. You know, it's just like it's like these people get drawn in and these sweetheart swindles online. You know, people are lonely. They spend time in these in these chat rooms and they they develop these relationships and they and these these. Other kind of predators prey on their emotions, and you know that wins over the intellect, and suddenly they're they're carving checks. But we had this guy who we had been in contact with, and I was uh, uh, posing as Rich Greenback. Yes, Rich Greenback. <laughs> yeah, like money that were all money names. Yeah, it was yeah, really funny. Jim, Jimmy DeMoney. Jimmy DeMoney <laughs> was one. Of my I love it. Yeah. Uh, my producer in this case, Tim Mueller, who's a great, great guy, and he he found this pub in london and and the the ruse was that i was part owner of it and that's where we had to have the meeting well they always want to get you into their territory but mm -hmm. we wanted to get them into ours so the guy comes in and he's looking around and we sit down and we have the meeting i said look you know we had a little problem with the funds transfer you know but here's five hundred dollars you know and I'll, we'll get back later in the day and so we're back and forth and we meet him in different locations in london and, and you know we look at you know rolls royces that i'm going to buy you know once <laughs> this money comes good. in we're sitting in it and we're all comfy and so the final guy comes back and i confront him. You know, I mean, I lowered the boom. I said, look, I know that you're trying to rip me off and this guy is sweating profusely <laughs> and we're in this pub and he looks at me and says, can I get a beer? <laughs> <laughs> I need a little bracer to take the edge off. He know? starts drinking. <laughs> he confronted one guy on the street and pretty much told him, you know, I know you're trying to scam people. And the guy just turned and started running away. <laughs> and you're just standing in the street going, excuse me, uh, you want to you talk? But you feel like running can make anything go away. <laughs> yeah. If you run fast And the enough. best part is how you ask him, could I have my $500 oh, yeah, back? Yeah, yeah. And the guy goes, yeah, actually gives him the 500 yeah, bucks back. Yeah, the finance back. people were so happy because I got this you know, <laughs> got the money, money back. back each time. Yeah, it was great. Are you at the top of your, like what you do in the news world, is that... Like, is it more uh, prestigious to be Bill O'Reilly, be you, be blub, you know? Well, it's just different. Overman or something? It's just different. You know, I, I've always enjoyed 
investigative reporting. You know, when I was 14 years old, I lived a mile away from the restaurant where Jimmy Hoffa was kidnapped, and I became enthralled with this whole story, and I saw the network show up, and the FBI was there, and it, it just, you know, I got bit by the bug then. So I've always, I've always enjoyed this sort of reporting. If they offered you Stone Phillips' job, would that be something you go, woo, I would love to do that? Or well, you'd be like, I, I'd rather you know, stay doing what I'm doing. It's not going to say no. I've got, you know, I've got a great gig, to be honest with you. And, and they, they let me do the kinds of stories I like to do. And, and one of the the things that has come out of the, the Predator investigations is it has been a reminder that this kind of enterprise reporting, this kind of impact journalism is not only something that people are interested in, that people watch, but it makes a difference. It, it creates a dialogue. It raises awareness. And it's, quite frankly, engaging for me. You know, it, it, it's interesting. You know, I, I love going <clears throat> to work. I love, you know, who gets to go on a plane and go to West Africa and track down some ID thieves. Mm -hmm. Who gets to do that? Right. It's got to be like, um, even even though you you know you're doing something for the the greater good, let's say you know getting these people off the streets. It's got to feel good personally at a, at a personal, just a basic human level, where you go, I'd love to get my hands on this guy that that's doing this. Like when I read those scam emails, right. I want to write back and just go, "Who do you think you're kidding? Do you I'm insulted that you sent me this. Right. That you exactly. think I'm so stupid." And, and, and you get to you get to confront these guys and and above and beyond that, you know, I work with some really smart, talented people. I mean, the producers with whom I work get it on every level. Mm -hmm. And and they're not only bright journalists, you know, they're good pals. And so, you know, I have it pretty good. Why is the show so popular, do you think? The To Catch a Predator? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a combination of things. It's it's this knowledge that these guys are out there, and most people only see it on this anonymous, nameless, faceless genre, you know, where it's just text, and we bring this to life. Mm -hmm. And so you see the face of this guy walk in, and he's not a guy that has the word predator tattooed on his forehead. He looks like the guy standing next to you at the dry cleaners on Saturday morning. And I think it's it's surprising to people that, Joe Average, you know, would not only engage in this explicit discussion, which is in most states illegal in itself, but to walk into a stranger's home mm -hmm. in, a, in a suburb, mm -hmm. into a $3 million house on the Jersey Shore on the beach. The beach, the beach like, ones like, are hilarious. Like, no big deal. The beach I, ones are hilarious with the girl just sitting there and just happens to have two beach chairs set up. Yeah. I was watching that over the weekend. I, I think another <laughs> uh, compelling thing about the show is the fact that um, – you're not seeing the people in cuffs, in a mug shot. Right. You're seeing it taking place it's as it's life. happening. Mm -hmm. And that it's, was it's, what was so compelling about the, la the last investigation was this, you know, Casey, our, our decoy, who, you know, 18-year-old college student, theater, dance, who, who looks. She really, really looked the part. It was amazing. Come on and she, was, she was really, yeah. But she was really smart. And she had the ability to engage these guys in a way that we had not seen before. And I think it was startling to people to see this real-time, live grooming process take place. After the first time, did you go, this will, okay, after you did it the first time, did you go, this will, man, we might as well make the best of this because this will never be able to be done again. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait a minute, every week we're getting 15 dudes to well, come see? I figured we'd do it, you know, two, maybe three times. <laughs> and when, 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 when we went to... Riverside County, California, which is the first time we did our investigation and law enforcement did a parallel investigation. I really sort of thought, wow, you know, what are the odds that we're going to have anybody walk into this house? You know, we may come back with nothing but video of me pacing in a kitchen like the Maytag repairman. And this is the one where we had 51 guys show up. 51? Wow. Guys were running into each other. We had a, guy, a homeland Jesus. security agent. We had a teacher. We had, I mean, guys from all walks of life. Can I ask you a, st a statistical question? Sure. How, okay, we see the guys on your show. Right. How many dudes and how many teenage girls, how many times is this scenario that you playing out with perverted justice happening? In real life? Yeah. That it's not getting caught. It's it's impossible to tell because of the nature of the Internet. You know, the, the Justice Department really doesn't have good figures on this. I mean, they can tell you how many murders take place in, in, in any given city. They can tell you the recidivism rate for any given crime. But you can't track this stuff. You know, we know anecdotally that we can go into any city in America and, and, and have this happen. But... In terms of how how often it really happens, nobody really knows. I mean, and that's the nature of the internet. And you keep it at the letter of the law. Like earlier, you go, "Hey, this is the, it's the law." Now, is there something where you ever discuss in your own mind or to people like where you go, "Okay, here's the age," because I, I there's a lot of Indian dudes on your show, and they're shocked. 
and I, you know, I do stand up and I talk to Indian dudes and the age is something ridiculous over there where they're from. And they go, what? what? 14? That's old. Well, <laughs> I think that the people who come into the house reflect the population of the city we're in and, and, and the professions. If we're near a military base, we'll see more military guys. If we're... You know, near no, Silicon no, I know Valley. what you're, we'll I know what you're doing now. It's trying, it's, no, I'm not but making it a racial no, question. No, no, but there's no, there's I'm no making it a law, like a racial issue, a moral. Like, say there's no law, right? There's no standard of law and an age that you just make up and decide. But in this country, I, the law is the law. The law is the law in the, in the state you're in, and then you send out a 16 year old thing. And guys are coming out to see a 16-year-old, but this, the law is 17 where you are. So it's, are you going to have the same outrage or the same disgust that the dude that's doing the 16-year-old uh, thing? I think that the protocol for perverted justice decoys is that, you know, they wouldn't even set up that scenario because it would be, you know, it wouldn't be illegal. It wouldn't be, you know. No, I mean, like, if 16 was. It's a little I mean, marginal yeah. like, I call right thing, there. Like, I think California is like 16. Let's go to Mike in Jersey. This comes up a lot. Uh, Mike, go ahead. We got Chris Hansen on uh, on our show. How you doing, guys? Notice how he said shut up. Yeah. What? Did you notice that? All right, what's your it's question? Well, I think it's entrapment. I think it's wrong. I mean, say... Like, I don't think he means... Dude, 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 calm like, down for a second. I don't... Up? Wait a minute. I don't think he meant right. set up as in setting them up. I think he meant the the scenario and because cameras, police, things have to be set up, houses, yeah. you know, okay. you know. so he's not saying he's trying to entrap the people. He's saying the, the scenario, he's not going to set up a 16-year-old scenario. I, I know the guys are scumbags, but it's still entrapment. You, you must get that a lot. Yeah, no, well, here's the here's, entrapment. Here's, uh, here's why it's not. and It's because when, when the perverted justice decoys go into the chat rooms, they simply have a profile which includes a picture that's unmistakably underage, mm -hmm. and they sit and wait. They never make the first move. It's always the potential predator who makes the first move. And isn't it the intent that is the crime? <clears throat> that's why a lot of people say, uh, well, I was role-playing. Right. It, uh, it varies from state to state. The laws do. But, but in a lot of states, the online solicitation in and of itself mm -hmm. could constitute a felony. Regardless of who's on the other end. Well, if, if it's, it's somebody who they believe is underage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the police do sting operations all the time, and the decoy is not always, you know, a 12- or 13-year-old kid. Sure. But but that's how these people are calling. Right. Hey, uh, we're running out of time here. We want to promote the uh, – you're doing something on Dateline there, Chris? On, uh, tonight at 10 Eastern, we um, are doing a, an investigation into iPod theft, and we – didn't realize what a problem this was until one of our senior producers' sons had his iPod stolen. So we decided to go out and see if we could track these things and who was taking them. So we, we bought about 20 iPods, and we inserted into the package software. So whoever ended up with this thing would register with Apple <laughs> and, and register with us. Oh, no. So then we had this, uh, we had this uh, 32-foot RV, right, and it's outfitted like a predator house, hidden cameras and everything. <clears throat> and it's got a banner on the side saying music giveaway. And so when we'd identify where one of these things was, we'd pull up, and the producer would get out with balloons and a camera crew, a la Prize Patrol, knock on the door and say, you know, you're eligible for this uh, free music giveaway, this music download card. They'd come into the RV, and I'm sitting there, and, and, and I sit down, and I'd ask them, D where'd you get it? Um, Best Buy, Circuit City, you know, cash or credit card, right? What kind of music do you have on it? And you know, for 20 minutes, go on. I'd say, <clears throat> there's a video I want you to see. And, of course, there's a, there's a monitor up there. And in the video is, uh, in some cases, of them stealing the actual iPod. And it goes back around to the question, should Apple do more? Could it do more? You know, what's, what's the responsibility to track these things, given the fact that, you know, this eye-jacking, Right, as it's called, is is epidemic. Know what I'm thinking? So the guy goes into the RV. He sees you like, oh no, <laughs> oh, no I didn't touch oh, her. No. That was, <laughs> and that was like, oh, he got me because I stole an iPod. Yeah. He's like, oh. they see you like, no, it's <laughs> man, no. Look, I'm not trying to say that no. iPod theft is the same as <laughs> yeah, but as soon as they see you right. though, they're they like, see you they're like, in a panic, like, oh no. People would come in and say, hey, yeah. You look like that, Chris. <laughs> yeah. I said, you know, I get that all yeah. the time. They're, they're, I get that all the they're time. They're pretty much relieved that you got them for an iPod <laughs> <laughs> freaking theft instead but of the other one. But it's really a fun. Uh, yeah, it sounds like it's a cool. Lot of, and and yeah. also, you got a book out there, right? 
Absolutely. It's on the whole predator issue, the enemy uh, already in your home. And, uh, you know, I took all these experiences that uh, that I've had and, and, you know, looking in the eyes of some 300 of these guys and talking to some of the experts in this field and distilled this information for parents to help keep their kids safe online. It's called To Catch a Predator, Protecting Your Kids from Online Enemies Already in Your Home. Before we go, though, i got to ask you if you're uh, allowed to talk about the lawsuit at all uh, that's against the uh, the network. Look, I can tell you this. Um you know, I'm a little limited because the lawsuit's sure. actually been filed, but you know, the lawyers have gone through the claims. They're without merit, and NBC is going to defend itself vigorously. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, anybody can file a lawsuit, and and they don't have to verify the things that are in it. It's a guy that apparently took his life because yep. uh, he was caught in one of the uh, oh the DA. Yeah, I was I was actually I ain't gonna lie to you, it, you know, the DA. I was like, good, good for you. <laughs> because he was one of the dudes that helped set up the whole thing, supposedly. Right? Well, it is kind of uh, ironic, the isn't family, it? Right? Yeah. Yeah, All right, right listen, we got a break. Yeah. We're uh, running out of show here. Chris Hansen, it's always Chris, a pleasure. Guys, you know thanks that. for having me. I always appreciate a pleasure, it. man. I'm really mad you yeah. didn't drink any of our lemonade or, or even try <laughs> yeah, the cookies. Got some coffee. You got the coffee, though. Shape, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tonight, it's uh, on Dateline. Chris tracks down stolen iPods and confronts <laughs> the thieves in a hidden camera investigation. 10 o'clock tonight on NBC. Well, Chris, you know now you're free to go. Uh, I think I you know what's waiting for you outside. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. Always right, a pleasure having Thanks, you on, man. I appreciate it. All right, we'll wrap right. up the show next. It's Opie and Anthony. <laughs>